May of 1962, Khrushchev decided to secretly deploy more than 50,000 Soviet troops to Cuba, along with nuclear-tipped <laughs> missiles that could threaten Washington and New York. On October 14th, a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft shot photos over Cuba clearly showing construction sites for medium-range and intermediate-range nuclear missiles. Thus began a 13-day confrontation between the Soviet Union and the United States that could end in a nuclear holocaust. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western <coughs> Hemisphere. After rejecting advice from several fronts for an airstrike and full invasion, Kennedy settled on a naval blockade, or <coughs> quarantine, of ships into Cuba. As Russian ships drew closer to the line of U.S. naval vessels, the spark that could set off a war was set. October 22, 1962, for the first time in its history, America's Strategic Air Command went to Defensive Condition 2. The next step, DEFCON 1, the cocked pistol for nuclear war. On the morning of October 28th, a new message from Khrushchev was broadcast on Radio Moscow. The British government has ordered to dismantle no weapons in Cuba, as well as their quaking and return to the Soviet Union. Once again, Kennedy checkmated Khrushchev. The missiles were removed. The top Soviet leadership took the Cuban outcome as a blow to its prestige, bordering on humiliation. I heard from my superiors in the Romanian intelligence who thought Khrushchev intended to kill JFK. When the leader of communist Romania returned 